Hi guys, I'm Tyler London, Chief Analyst of Cabot Small Cap Confidential and Cabot Early Opportunities, and I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. I'm recording this on Friday, October 28th, just around noon. And uh, wow, it's been a crazy week. So let's let's rewind a little bit here and kind of recap what happened this week. So obviously a big week for earnings and economic data. The week started with this turmoil in U.S. listed Chinese stocks. Then on Tuesday, we had the U.K. election uh, bringing in the third prime minister in two months. That seems like ages ago that that happened. The economic train fired up uh, with housing prices posting a bigger month-over-month -month decline than expected. Also on Monday, consumer confidence came in way lower than expected. The Richmond Fed manufacturing index was weak. Uh, and then Canada surprised with just a 50 basis point hike versus a 75 basis point hike that was expected from them. So that was a little bit encouraging. On Tuesday, you know, just digging through research, trying to kind of digest everything I could, I came across this Bank of America study showing that over the previous three weeks, so the three weeks uh, ending uh, last Friday, inflows into single stocks as a percentage of the S&P 500 market cap were in the 99th percentile of history since 2008. So the bank went on to say that inflows at this level are followed by above average returns, uh, in the S&P 500 over the subsequent 1, 3, 6, and 12-month period. So the implication when you're digging into this, of course, money has been flowing into stocks, uh, but the implication is that it's still in this sort of bad economic news is good news for the stock market, given that it could lead to the Fed backing off. So that was Tuesday during the day. Tuesday night, we get the Google earnings miss, uh, weak advertising revenue from them, and Microsoft beat expectations but their guidance, especially for cloud revenue, was pretty weak. So Wednesday morning, we wake up. Both of those stocks are down sharply. Uh, and then later in the day, Facebook or Meta totally tanks. Um, we move into Thursday. We get the Q3 GDP reading. Better than expected, up 2.6% versus 2.3% expected. Over in Europe, the ECB raised rates by 75 basis points. Then we get some more earnings releases, sort of the stuff that I'm following. You know, I'm not going to go through it all, but Ma uh, MasterCard and Visa beat, uh, ServiceNow beat. And then we get into Thursday afternoon, and of course, we get Apple and Amazon. Apple was pretty good. That stock is up today. And Amazon, just total train wreck, way worse than expected. Uh, shares were down more than 15% after hours on Thursday. Today, as of midday Friday, they're down only 10%, so an improvement there. Um, but then also this morning, the economic data uh, from September's PCE price index came out uh, essentially in line with expectations showing a 0.3% rise as compared to August and up 6.2% year to date. Now that's a number that the Fed is going to be watching closely. And then of course, September pending, hit, uh, pending existing home sales tanked. Uh, so the upshot of all this is that sort of when you look on a stock by stock basis, oddly enough, it's become one of these markets where a lot of the old names like IBM, Oracle, Caterpillar, McDonald's, Exxon are doing well uh, and Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook are not. Um, even with that dynamic, over the last five days, the S&P is up, uh, the S&P 500 is up more than 3% while the NASDAQ is eking out around a 1.2% gain. Uh, and so here we are, midday Friday. Oddly enough, with all of this going on, the market is ripping higher despite some of these awful earnings reports from the mega cap companies. Um, again, it kind of seems as though it's because the economic data has been bad enough to suggest that the Fed should finally be uh, willing to back off a little bit after two more hikes. So now let's talk about next week. So we have the FOMC meeting uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, followed by a press uh, conference. The market is now expecting 75 basis point uh, hike for next week. No surprise there. That That is what we're all looking for. Um, the big question is really going to be around what they say for December and messaging related to that. So at the end of last week, just again, going through the probabilities here, the market is saying at the end of last week, they were expecting a 75 basis point hike. Um, and the probability of that was around 77%. Looking this morning, the probability of a 75 basis point hike in December has fallen to just 43%. So the odds are 
now for a 50 basis point hike in December, uh, that's at a 48% probability. And it kind of seems like, you know, when you step back and you think about everything that's going on, it, it kind of seems to me like this is that moment where, you know, where next week for the Fed is has a chance to finally decide whether they're going for a hard landing or a soft landing, at least as far as the market is concerned. It seems like if we don't get some messaging around the possibility of a 50 basis point hike in December, the market is not going to like that at all. It's hard to say what's going to happen if they do leave that door open. I think there's going to be a lot uh, that comes down to messaging and what they talk about. Um, but again, it just feels like if we don't get a door open to a 50 basis point hike in December and then a pause going into 2023, uh, this recent strength uh, might fizzle and, and the market could be in trouble heading into the end of the year. Hopefully that's not the case. So here we have, of course, the chart of the S&P 500. You can see it's up a little over a percent and a half today. We'll move on to the NASDAQ. Like I said, it's up, you know, over the last five days, just about 1.3%, maybe a little bit more than that, 1.5%. Um, and then, you know, the surprise performer, as far as uh, a lot of investors are concerned, are small caps. So small caps have been a relative bright spot lately. They have outperformed uh, the S&P 500 over the last five and one week periods. And they're doing okay today as well. This is probably due to the combination of more attractive valuations. So small caps have been trading at about a 25% discount on forward PE as compared to large caps. They are also less exposed to foreign exchange. We've heard a lot about foreign exchange headwinds from Microsoft, Google, all these bigger international companies. Uh, and then of course, even on a standalone basis, small caps are pretty inexpensive uh, with a forward PE of under 12. It was under 11 a few weeks ago. And that is even with forward estimates continuing to come down, not just for small caps, but also for mid and large caps. So again, it sort of seems like next week, it's really gonna be all about the Fed. We are gonna see a lot of uh, small cap companies that I follow step up and deliver earnings with a relative strength in small cap medical technology companies. Those are the individual stocks that I wanna talk about today. Uh, and I have, let's see, five or six names here that I think could be uh, of interest. Okay, so first, let's move on to, well, here we have a chart of the 10 year that has come down this week, which is probably, you know, almost most definitely helped the market. Uh, it's up a little bit today, but let's move on to Axonix. So Axonix has a market cap of 3.5 billion, ticker symbol AXNX, and I believe I've talked about this one before. Uh, so big picture there in the uh, sacral neuromodulation solutions space. Uh, it has been a pretty solid performer. If you want to read more about it, you can pause the video and look at this uh, little field up here, which describes what it does. It also has revenue and earnings trends. Uh, the company is not making money. It won't probably for a while. Uh, but sales uh, trends have been pretty solid. So what we're looking for in the upcoming quarter, 35% growth uh, to around $63.5 million. And uh, that should put them on trend. If we look out into future years, we can go down to this chart here. And this line right here is what we're looking at for revenue growth. So we're expecting 39% revenue growth this year. Uh, 250 million. So that's the guidance that we're going to be hoping from Exonix for. Uh, and then if they give advanced guidance for next year, around 28% growth to 320 million. As I said, they're not going to be earning uh, in positive earnings territory for a few years. So let's go back to next stock. This is Repligen, ticker symbol R-G-E-N. Talked about this one before as well. Market cap of 10 billion. So Repligen sold off uh, last week because of some pretty soft commentary from a German competitor uh, in the bioprocessing space, just talking about uh, like destocking for COVID related uh, vaccines. And, you know, that really hit Repligen pretty hard. But when we look at what uh, larger competitors like Danaher and Thermo Fisher are doing, it sort of seems as though a lot of the bad news, a lot of the slowdown in COVID-related stuff 
for Replogen has already been priced into the stock. It's pretty cheap compared to history um, on valuation. So kind of an interesting setup. We should see earnings from them out Tuesday morning. Uh, so look for that one. In terms of what is expected, growth has definitely come down. So we're down here looking at this field down here. So 7% revenue growth expected uh, in the September quarter to 191.5 million. And if we jump over to forward expectations, that would put the company on track here for 19% revenue growth this year, uh, 800 million. And then looking out in 2023, we were hoping for at least guidance of 11% revenue growth to 890 million. I'm sure that management's gonna be relatively conservative, um, but that 11% growth rate is our hurdle. Next up is Procet. PRCT is the ticker, market cap of around 2 billion. Um, so Procept, uh, we are looking for them to report on Thursday. It should be Thursday after the bell. Um, revenue growth of 99% revenue growth expected there, 17.3 uh, million. We'll go out to the full year and forward estimates. So for the full year 2022, 103% revenue growth, 70 million. Uh, and then looking out into 2023, 71% uh, to 120 million. So it's not a huge revenue base, um, but as you can see, pretty considerable pace of growth uh, for ProSet. Moving on, we have Transmedics. TMDX is the ticker symbol here, 1.5 billion market cap. Uh, interesting business if you want to dig into it. Um, basically, they're trying to set up a better system for transporting living organs, so liver, heart, uh, lung, and uh, they've got a whole kind of you know nationwide network that they're building out. Um, in terms of what we are looking for for revenue growth in Q3, 252% to 18.9 million, so huge growth, but off of a pretty low base. And we'll go out to the forward estimates for the full year. So it would be 164% for 2022. And then for next year, looking for 50% revenue growth to 120 million. As with most of these companies, it's, you know, Transmetics is not profitable right now uh, and won't be for, for some time. All right, we have Cybone up next, ticker symbol S-I-B-N. They will actually report a week from Monday, so the week after next. Um, they are expected to deliver 19% revenue growth in the quarter to 26.4 million. And I'll bring up the forward chart for you. I think it, it is helpful to, to pause the video or go back and, and study these charts for a little bit, or rather these tables, uh, just to get an idea of the growth trends. I don't wanna bore you all with it. Um, you can do that on your own time for the companies that you're interested in. But uh, for the full year, for Cybone, 22% revenue growth, and then going into next year, 18% growth uh, is our hurdle for guidance, which would bring 23 revenue up to 130 million. And then lastly, a company that I haven't been following for that long, but the last couple of months have been doing a little bit more work on it. This is Paragon 28, uh, market cap of 1.5 billion. Uh, let me just drop this off. You can see this one came public just about a year ago and it's up from the IPO price, which was 16, trading just under $20 now. But you know, it hasn't, it hasn't done much. And granted, it's been a really pretty poor market for most stocks and IPOs especially. Uh, but Lockup was this past spring in April and they're well past that now. Uh, so I think Paragon is gonna be an interesting one to look at. We're expecting 18% revenue growth to 42 and a half million. And we'll back out here to the longer term chart. So the losses here, the EPS expected losses are smaller than some of the other companies. Uh, profitability might be a 20, 25 timeframe type thing here. Uh, and we're hovering around 20% revenue growth annually. So 22. Uh, for this year and then hopefully 17% or better for 2024.
for next year. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Again, next week, it's really going to be all about the Fed uh, and what they say. And it's going to be an interesting week with earnings reports. Um, and uh, of course, we have Halloween coming up on Monday. So enjoy that. And we will be back in touch next Friday. Take care.